going on YouTube? Uh, make a little quick video here on the basic cleaning. This isn't a deep clean or anything by any means, but just a basic cleaning that I do with my Glock 19. Uh, the stripped down process and everything is going to be essentially the same for all Glocks. Uh, it doesn't really matter which one you have. <clears throat> so let's go ahead and get into it. First things first, pull the mag out. Gonna lock the slide back. See nothing in there. Give it a pinky check. <clears throat> Let the slide down. Point it in a safe direction. Pull the trigger. All right, that's going to be your first step. Uh, dry firing people. I know a lot of people have their uh, feelings about it. It's in the Glock's handbook to fire it, and you're not going to be able to strip your weapon without dry firing it. So, just something everyone has to get over. <clears throat> first things first. Um, you'll see these two little, uh, it's just like a slide release almost, there's a tab on each side. You're going to want to pull those down. You've got to move the slide back just a little bit. So the easiest way I found to do it is hook your thumb, put this here, and now basically what you want to do is slide your, your uh, top hand here on the slide, just like this, towards the back of your hand, towards your thumb. So when you do that, just like that, just a little bit. You can just see this little bit of overhang back here. Pull these two down while you're holding these down. Let go of it, and your slide's going to come forward. Really simple. <clears throat> go ahead and slide your slide off of your frame. And this is a Gen 4, so you'll see that this has the dual recoil spring. Really easy. Take your thumb and put pressure towards the muzzle of the gun, or of the slide. Just like that. That'll release it set that aside and then here where your um, empties would be coming out you just take your finger you can push up on your barrel some that slides right out real easy and right there for virtually all of your cleaning and your maintenance on a Glock that's going to be the extent of it um, there's not a huge need to go farther unless you have a ton of rounds ran through it. I mean, then you can take it down farther, but that's not for this video. So, you can see here, this is my my carry. So on the inside there, you kind of get some, you can see there's like some lint, stuff like that in there. Wipe it out. <clears throat> um, so, just to make it real crude and easy, uh, what I do a lot of times, I like I like boar snakes. They're easy. They're effective. Um, this one here is uh, for nine millimeter, but you can see it also will fit the uh, 380, nine millimeter, 38, and 357. Um, same thing with like uh, 22 for like 22 rimfire. That'll work for your ARs also. So um, some of those calibers, like why do you know, kind of interchange. So here's the boar snake. We'll pull this out, unravel it. Um, if you've never seen a boar snake, they come with kind of like a a brass weight here. And this would be if you were going to be. Uh, it's helpful if you're going to clean your gun while it's still assembled. Basically, what you do is you lock your slide back, and then you can kind of see into the uh, chamber of your barrel. This uh, brass weight you would drop in there. And then that would travel straight down and come out the bottom of your barrel. And then you would pull the snake through. But since we have our barrel out, <clears throat> we're just going to do it this way. Um, so it comes kind of with like almost like a paracord style rope. It all comes to a sewn head here, which kind of helps uh, feed, it into, feed it into the barrel. Uh, a few inches down, you can see there's some brass brushes built right into it and then you just got a length of the material and then you kind of got like a little tail sewn onto the end so this barrel here shouldn't be oh, it's got pocket dust and stuff in it you're not going to be able to see it but I mean yes it's dirty but it's hasn't been from firing just from carrying it all the time that's why I'm cleaning it. So, drop that through. Grab the boar snake. See the head pop through. 
the brushes went through, I hit the tripod, no big deal. There you go. You can see there, nice and clean. One, that was one pass. I mean, if you're doing a lot of shooting, you can put some solvent on these, and that'll help break it down. Or use a traditional cleaning, uh, bore cleaning kit, and with you know, with a brass brush and patches and all that stuff. We'll pull it through one more time. Try not to hit the tripod. There, the head pops through. Kind of has some tension. There's the brushes, and then just the rest of it slides, slides right out. So pretty easy, pretty straightforward. Nice, effective, clean. All right, set that aside. You're done with that. Uh, for now, for a lubricant, here's what I like to use. Recoil springs are rolling away from me. Here's what I like to use. It's a FP10 Lubricant Elite. Um, it cleans, lubes, and protects, so it's kind of like a CLP. Uh, one thing that I like is you've got a temperature rating down to negative 49 degrees Fahrenheit all the way up to 500 degrees Fahrenheit. That's nice. And then the other thing bear with me I've seen it on here uh, okay well oh right here FP I don't know if you'll be able to see it FP10 contains no solid lubricants PTFE which is Teflon to build up or change tolerances FP10 will not harm most wood and plastics uh, surfaces FP10 will not remove copper fouling so uh, there's nothing solid in here I mean it's a good idea to give it a shake but there's nothing, you have no solids, none of that Teflon that's going to fall out like a lot of your other uh, lubricants and cleaners that are out on the, or CLPs that are in the industry. They're using that Teflon as a cleaner. And sometimes that Teflon can, one, fall out in the bottle and it's not even making it to your gun. Two, it could uh, uh, change tolerances if you're in your gun if you're shooting with something that's really tight tolerance tighter than anything I own, um, I was going to say, you know, like a, let's say a Wilson Combat 1911. Uh, those high-end 1911s, some of the Kimbers, they're known for being really tight tolerance. Maybe it would affect them. Um, and then not only that, those uh, microscopic particles of Teflon or the PTFE, those are going to also increase the likelihood of clumping and attracting dirt versus um, kind of keeping it lubri lubricated in I don't want to say in solution, but help carry away the dirt, I guess would be a better way to put it. So anyways, I like this stuff. Um, my recommendation for it, it, it is a little bit thicker than like a REM oil or anything. And I mean, a dab will do you. Not kidding. This this bottle will, sh will last you a long time with a number of guns. You don't need a lot of it, and it's very effective. <clears throat> so real easy here on the frame. You're going to look, I just got a, a dry patch right here, I just got some crud in here, I'm just going to try to pick it out, wipe it off, <clears throat> just kind of do a visual inspection, just make sure nothing looks out of whack, and on a Glock, there's on the slide, or excuse me, on the frame, where it's going to be making contact with the slide, there's four spots that you want to lubricate, and that's going to be in these four corners right here and like I said they don't need a lot so what I typically do is I'll take my oil and I'll just put a little drop on my finger just like that and just kind of give these a little rub just like that Nice and that's easy. Take this up, patch that's already dirty, wipe off the excess, and then I actually just kind of go over them again. Like I said, this stuff goes a long way for just a little bit of it. So, and clocks, you don't need to run them overly lubricated. You know, you don't have to run them super wet. So right there, that's done. Easy. Next thing is going to be your barrel, <clears throat> and here, pretty much the same thing. I'm going to take this, put it on my finger, and I'm just going to give the whole barrel a once over here. Especially up here where this head locks up. Just going to go all the way around it. And 
And you can probably tell by the way by the way that this barrel looks now versus when I started. You can tell just kind of how shiny it is there. I'm trying to get the light to reflect off of it. I mean, you can tell there's oil on that easily. And there was just that little bit, just that little bit that I put on my finger. You know, I'll take this patch that I had earlier. And I'll just kind of go over if I got some areas that are kind of heavy. And I'll just wipe it down. Go across it, go in all these areas where it tends to hold some extra. And right there, you can see it's still got a nice shine to it. You can tell it's still got oil, you can feel it. It's still got a really nice, smooth, fine film on it. But there's not a ton of excess on there. This stuff is awesome. Set that there. Recoil spring. I'm sure you could do something with that eventually. <clears throat> and now for your uh, slide here. Go through. Make sure all your crud's clean out of it. Grab another patch here. Just like that. Clean this out. And like I said, this is the way that I do it. I'm not saying that this is the end all be all. I'm not saying that this is hell. I'm not even going to argue with anyone and tell you that it's the right way. It's just the way that I do it, and I've. I have good luck with it, so I just kind of wipe all that out. Give my finger a little, another little drop. You can see what I'm talking about. Just, I mean, that's nothing. My finger's just damp. I'll come in here, give the top of this, where that barrel's going to be sliding, a little bit of love. And I actually don't have a Q-tip or anything with me. And I know you lubricated the slides there on the frame, but I'll usually take a Q-tip and just barely get a little bit on there and go down these uh, these grooves here. And then I still got a little bit left on my finger. Right there. Right there. That's it. That's all I do. Easy. Super easy. And I don't have anything showing excessive wear or nothing. So realistically, without going through and you know showing somebody that, I mean, you can sit here, pull out your gun, and I mean, you can clean it and have it ready to go back in the gun cabinet in five minutes. So, uh, reassembly, just the opposite of what you what you did to take it apart. I'm going to run through it real quick. You're going to take your barrel, put your slide upside down, take your barrel, put it through there, rock it towards the back. You can kind of see how this is sitting right there. Now if I slide, I'm going to slide it back here a little bit more. It's going to drop down. That means it's sitting where it needs to be. Take your recoil spring. Put that up in the front here. Push it in. Lock it there on the barrel. Nice and easy. Take your frame. Take your slide. Line up the grooves there in the back. I mean, it can only go on there one way. Slide it on. Cycle it. We know the gun's clear. Function test it. Trigger reset. Yep. Yeah, everything's good. So, well, that's pretty much it. That wraps up my quick uh, video on how I go about cleaning my Glock. So, hopefully it helped you out. Like always, like, comment, favorite, subscribe, and we'll see you in the next one.